All right, we're good to go. Thanks everybody for being here. Thanks for joining us for a, another webinar brought to you by Optionslam.com. Let's get through the preliminaries quickly. CFTC rule, please read it, understand it before you risk your hard-earned money in the markets. And our disclaimer tells you that we are not licensed financial advisors. We are not registered investment advisors. We do not provide investment or financial advice, nor do we make investment recommendations. The webinars that we provide, all the sample trades and ideas and concepts are for educational purposes only. I am Marco. And this is my email address, optionslam.com at gmail.com. Please feel free to send me your questions, comments, suggestions. Uh, and in fact, I'm looking for suggestions for future webinars. So if you have some ideas, some suggestions of things you'd like, topics you'd like uh, for us to cover, uh, I'd love to hear from you. Shoot me an email, optionslam.com at gmail.com. Okay, today's topic. Selling two times the implied move. Does it make sense? Does it work? Is it worth it? Try to answer some of those questions. What got me thinking about this was some recent opportunities on some very high flying stocks, such as Tesla and Google and Facebook and, you know, the fame stocks, high priced stocks. Okay, high priced stocks is mainly my focus here. Because low price stocks, to go way far out of the money, two times the implied move, there's just not enough premium to justify the risk. But the question is, can we justify the risk on these high priced stocks, especially these high flyers that seem to draw a lot of implied volatility, therefore high premiums, even far out of the money high premiums for option contracts. So let's define the strategy quickly. The screen in front of you is showing you the risk profile of a short put. And you'll remember when you sell a put, you are obligated to buy the stock at the price at which you sold the put. So for example, you got a $100 stock and you're gonna sell a far out of the money put, that would be something like $50 strike. That's, that's like half the price of where the stock is trading. The $50 strike is far out of the money. Right? When you sell that put for whatever premium you collect for it, you are obligated to buy that stock at that strike price come expiration day. Come expiration day, if that stock is trading below $50 and that $50 put is now in the money, you are obligated to buy it at $50, even if it's only trading for 40. Of course, you get to collect, keep the premium that you collected, but what are the odds that a stock is going to be cut in half from $100 down to $50? Okay, it's an extreme example, yes, but it's an example to get my point across. Okay, so what is the risk? The risk is the stock goes to zero. 
the stock goes to zero and you still got to buy it for 50 bucks because you are obligated as a seller of that $50 put contract, options contract, you are obligated to buy it for $50, regardless of what price it is, should the owner of that contract, the person on the other side of that contract, the buyer of that contract, the person you sold it to, decide to put it to you. All right. Clear enough. Short call. Same story, just the other side. You are obligated to not buy the stock, but you are obligated to sell the stock at whatever price you sold that option contract for. And again, we're thinking in terms of far out of the money. So you got that $100 stock, you might be looking at the $150 strike would be a far out of the money strike to sell. And when you put those two together, the short put and the short call, you have a short strangle. Now, what's interesting is to note would be that the short call has a requirement, a margin requirement. More, let's think in terms of a Reg T account, okay? A, 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 reg, a, reg, a reg T account, in other words, an ordinary margined account. Uh, or you can think of it in terms of a, of a, of a uh, tax advantaged account, like an IRA account too. Uh, the thing is, in order to, a, a lot of brokerages won't let you sell uh, naked, options in tax advantaged accounts some brokerages will allow you to um uh, many won't uh, more and more brokerages are coming around to allowing it to happen even in a in a even in a um tax advantaged account but you will have to be cash secured in other words you need to have enough cash in your account in case that stock does go, in the case of a short put, in the case that stock does go to zero and you sold the $50 put, you better have $50,000, or I'm sorry, $5,000, right? In your account so that you can fulfill your obligation, okay? So, what's interesting to note is that the margin requirement in a Reg T account is generally around 20 to 25% of, um, of the total cost of the exposure so again using that 50 dollar put example your exposure is five grand if the stock went to zero that would be your total loss right you'd have to buy it for five grand uh 100 shares of stock and it would have zero value um you'd be at a five thousand dollar loss you have to have at least five thousand dollars in your account in a tax advantaged account whereas in a red t account you're only going to be required depending on the stock depending on your broker but in a reg t account you're only going to be required to have 20 to 25 percent it's going to depend but right right in that ballpark generally speaking so you don't need the whole five grand you're only going to need uh what's what's 20 percent about uh one grand right 20 percent of five grand five honestly i'm really good at math in my head but when i'm talking and trying to do math at the same time i can't do it so i gotta i gotta lean on my little uh desktop calculator here uh five grand uh times 20 percent is one grand indeed so anyway, that's the margin requirement to sell just the put or just the call. So again, selling just the put or just the put or just 
the call, the margin requirement is going to be about one grand. Um, to sell both of them, the margin requirement does not double. It is still one grand, and it's simple. The reason why is very simple because you can't lose on both sides. You can only lose it. The stock's either going to go up through your call strike or it's going to go down through your put strike, but uh, you're not going to, you, you can't lose on both sides. One side's going to be a winner and the other side's going to be the loser if the, if the stock actually does go through a strike. So anyway, that's the nuts and bolts of uh, the margin um, in a uh, reg T situation. All right, so let's take a look at uh, some uh, a recent example of a high flyer. So Tesla just had earnings just last week, right? 726. And the implied move monthly, and we're gonna I'm gonna focus on monthly contracts. I'm gonna focus on the net. I want to focus on when I when I, when I sell these naked strangles, I like to go out a few weeks, okay? I like to go out at least three weeks. Uh, at, generally, I like to go out at least three weeks. If it's if it's five weeks or six weeks, that's okay too. All right. So um, somewhere in that range, three to six or seven weeks out in time. And I like to deal with monthly contracts mainly because there seems to be more volume there and they're more liquid, they're traded more heavily. The only downside to monthly contracts is uh, oftentimes we're gonna find there's not as many strikes available sometimes in certain stocks and in certain, um, option expiration cycles. So I'm going to go to optionslam.com and I'm going to go to the implied move monthly page and I'm going to see that the straddle price for the August monthly is $71.47. So simply, again, all I do is I go to optionslam.com and I go to my stock, I type it in up here, Tesla, Hit enter on my keyboard or click that go button and it takes me to Tesla's earnings history page. I'm going to fast forward here. You know, there's lots of information down here and there's the um, EVR chart down here, et cetera, et cetera. We're going to we're going to fast forward through all that stuff and go right to the implied move monthly page. And on the implied move monthly page, we see that the implied move, the final closing implied move at the end of the day on July 26, for Tesla, the stock Tesla, the implied move was $71.47. Now that is the implied move. That is based on the straddle, the cost of the straddle, going out to the next available monthly option expiration date, regular monthly, which would be the third Friday of August, right? And that equates to 10.83%. So that information is easily readily available. You can do it yourself at your brokerage house too. You can just go price out what the at the money straddle is and and uh, and see it there. The pre-earnings release close, ER is earnings release. The pre-ER close was $657. The implied move is $71. This provides a range. The market is pricing in a range. Take the 657, the closing price, minus the $71 to get the 586. Add the $71 to the 657 to get the 729. And that's the range that the market is expecting the stock to move. But if we go into uh, uh, optionslam.com, and we take a look at what the uh, at what the one day move is. We can see that sometimes the stock actually can move oh outside 
outside the implied move. Does it usually stay inside the implied move? Yeah. Yeah, inside the implied move. Generally, it is inside the implied move, indicated by an I. But sometimes it can move outside the implied move, and that's just the one day move. And if we jump over in optionslam.com over to the post earnings page, we can see that on the table here that sometimes price, maybe it was inside the implied move on the one day, but then five days later, it was definitely outside the implied move, right? And three weeks later, it was far outside the implied move, okay? So if we're selling options that are three to five to seven weeks out in time, we need to pay attention to what the option slam data is for uh, uh, some time frame out in the future, okay? It's not just the one day move that we need to be concerned with when we're selling options that expire way out in time. Not way out in time, three to five weeks or whatever the case might be. Now, do we have to hold those options? Do we have to hold that, that trade any longer than the one day? No, we can lock in whatever profit is available, assuming there is profit available, uh, on day one. Okay? So you don't have to hold all the way to options expiration. We all know that. We can close our position any time we want ahead of, uh, with American style options, ahead of expiration day. All right. All right. So anyway, back to where we're going with this. So we can see that, yeah, just to sell the implied move uh, out, uh, is uh, is a strategy. It looks like it works most of the time, but it looks like there are certain situations and, and, and circumstances in which that trade, selling just the implied move out in time, just the implied move itself, in this case it was $71, that we could get in deep doo-doo, right? So the concept is, let's double it. Let's, instead of selling one, the, exactly the implied move out, let's double it. Let's go $71.47, the implied move, times two, 143. What's the chances of the stock moving times two? Two times the implied move. Slim to none is the answer, but... Slim still poses risk. There still is risk. If their risk is still, if the chances and the probabilities are slim to none, well, none is good, <laughs> but slim is, you know, still a little scary, especially when you're putting yourself on the line for large sums of risk just in that outlier case price happens to go double or more the implied move on an earnings event and it can happen and it has happened and i'm lived i lived <laughs> and i live to tell about it <laughs> okay so let's go on with the concept here. So the two times the move provides a range now of the 658. Okay, I just rounded the 657.62, uh, rounded it to 658, the pre-ER close, plus two times the implied move, $143, takes you up to 801 on the upside, and minus $143 takes you down 515 on the downside. So let's look at selling a strangle and the recent earnings release, 72621, and how that would have panned out and where that would take you up and through to today. And let's look at selling a strangle, two times the implied move, the 515 put and the 800 call. Now I'm going to go 
uh, I think I have this modeled up in Thinkorswim. Let's go to Tesla. And I think I have this modeled up in here. No, that is not it. Uh, Tesla. Okay. Uh, so that was. Um, oh, oh, think back. Okay. I'm sorry. Here, I'm in think back already. Okay. 728. Uh, no, we got to go to 726, the earnings date. I'll model this up. I have it modeled up for sure in one software, but I wanted to show you in uh, Think or Swim quickly. So let me just go through the motions here. Uh, we'll switch this to all contracts, and we're looking for the we're looking at the August twentieth, and we're going to look for the five fifteen puts. Let's sell that put, and we're looking for the uh, what was it eight hundred call? Um, yeah, eight hundred call. Okay, and then here's the eight hundred call and uh, hold the control key down and sell that call. That puts it into a strangle, selling one of each. The 800 call, the 515 put, brings in an 842 credit times 100 shares. That would be an $842 credit, selling two times the implied moon. And what's the probabilities? Slim to almost none that that's going to get in trouble between now and, whoop, I got, uh, between now and August 20th. Okay, I, I got the right expiration. Between now and August 20th. So let's take a look and let's, let's load that into 842. Let's go to think back. Is that the right craze? Yeah, 842. Okay, so I do have it loaded in, in the live, uh, so we can see how that trade has performed to date. Let's take a look at the risk profile. And where is that trade right now? With the stock at 708.93, that trade is right now, could be closed today for $315 profit, okay? And if price does not, Okay, 708.77 is where Tesla is. Let's take a look at the price chart and see how that looked on the price chart. Now, on the price chart, you can see the earnings event. Let's get rid of this. Uh, let's get rid of these drawings here. Uh, remove that drawing and uh, let's, let's, uh, I like to just, uh, uh, Let's get rid of uh, studies too. Uh, I like that probability of expiring con, but uh, apply that. And we'll loop volumes on there. So anyway, there's the earnings date right there, okay? And the, uh, the, uh, the stock did nothing. It went nowhere the one day after. So I'm gonna take us now, I'm gonna jump over to the one platform so we can go back in time. That's the advantage to the one platform. I can go back in time. Let's go find Tesla here, T-S-L-A. And let's go to, uh, that's the right day, June, July 26th. And um, let's see, I I modeled this up, but I think I, was, I think I was in the wrong time frame. I think I gotta go to uh, the close. Yeah, I gotta go to the close. Uh, I uh, at the time I modeled this up. So there it is, and there this there's the same trade, and this takes us back in time to July 26. Now the stock we saw in the price chart basically did nothing that first day, right? So the reaction, though the price has got, gotten much stronger, price has gone up since the earnings date, and now the profit's about 350 bucks or so, if I remember right. Let's see where it was. What would have happened on the very first day when price pretty much did nothing? I'm going to go back. I'm going to go forward a day. Let's see, forward a day. All right. And we got about, uh, looks like uh, at the end of the day, 
at the end of the day, at the close, you see I'm 10 minutes after the close here. Okay, this is Eastern Standard Time. So uh, in military terms, 1610. So this would be 10 minutes after the close. Uh, uh, in one day, that price pretty much stayed right in the middle. Okay, there's our risk graph. And there was $367 of profit available in that first, very first day. And that's due to two things. Price didn't go anywhere, and IV crushed. The implied volatility in the options just got crushed. And the option premiums just got de deteriorated enormously from um, uh, almost cut in half. Right from eight hundred and forty-two dollar premium that we collected, now worth just over um, not not even five hundred bucks, right? Um, uh, under uh, four hundred and forty or something, four hundred and eighty or something like that. Yeah, not even five hundred bucks, uh, providing an opportunity for three hundred sixty-seven dollar profit. Then let's go to day two. Let's see what happens on day two. Implied volatility continues to crush. And the, and, and the price con continues to go nowhere, virtually nowhere. Okay, we can see that here. There's a, a, a uh, this, this, you can see how the price is going sideways. Is that the right day, uh, June? No, no, not, that's not the right day. Oh, this chart doesn't, this chart takes me back in time to, uh, to that. That's why I like to, um, I, I'm going to refer back to thinkorswim chart where we can see Price went sideways for a few days, right? And then finally, the news started sinking in. And for whatever other reasons, price has since then started to climb. So just walking through it a little at a time here. Price continued to, to go nowhere on day two. And IV continued to crush providing now an opportunity to close the trade for 500 bucks of profit, 478. And one more day, let's go forward one more day. Ah, price starts to move and it starts moving towards one of the strikes and the profit starts to deteriorate. Now, Will I be able to keep the entire $842 of premium holding this all the way to expiration day? That's going to strictly depend on where price ends up. If price ends up below $800, right? Right around there, right? If price stays below $800 and closes eight, less than $800 come August 20th, yes, I keep the whole premium. And what's the chances of price going all the way down to 515? That's way down here now. That's even further the, away than it was when we put the trade on it. Doesn't seem very likely that that's going to be a problem, but I am a little concerned about that eight hundred dollar because this stock can be a mover. Although, look at the implied move now. The uh, the IV cone is at seven eighty five come August twentieth. So one standard deviation away, okay, is what the IV cone is telling us that now seven one standard deviation away is seven eighty five. 800 isn't too far away anymore. So there's still risk in this trade, even though feeling somewhat comfortable, there's still obvious and near risk in this trade. Let's look at a couple other stocks quickly that recently um, uh, had earnings. Uh, we'll do this together. Let's go to Facebook. I don't think I got this modeled in yet. I let's go back. Uh, let's go. Facebook was uh, July twenty eighth, just two days later. All right, so let's go to July um, twenty eighth. There we go, July twenty eighth. Let's go uh, about uh, 
An hour before the close, 15, 10, 10 minutes after three o'clock Eastern Standard Time. And uh, okay, implied move. What, let's let's look at the regular monthlies. Let's go to the regular month. Now, can you sell some other expiration cycle? Yes, of course you can sell other expiration cycles. You can sell the the, exp the cycle that ends in a few days. But 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 that's here's one the, the July uh, twenty uh, July thirties expire in two days. Okay, the implied move is going to be closer though. Okay, the implied move is going to be tighter. So let's see what is the implied move. With the stock trading right at almost at 375, uh, is about uh, the the call is uh, the at the money call is uh, 867. Okay, let's just look at this for a quick minute. 867 and the at the money put is nine dollars, and that would be about uh, 17 dollars and 67 cents for the implied move weekly, what we refer to as the implied move weekly uh, over at optionslam.com, which which we can do that. We can we can just refer to Option Slam. We go to Facebook and we can go to the implied move weekly right there okay, rather than the monthly. If we want to consider selling something that's closer in time, not having to wait out uh, all that time, and we can see that that implied move at the time we captured it was seventeen dollars and fifty-eight cents. What, what I just calculated at one, looking at the at the money straddle, was just slightly more than that, seventeen dollars and sixty-seven cents. So right in that ballpark is the implied move weekly. But what I want to refer to is my preference is to go out in time, and it's not necessary. But if you do go out in time. You're going to have an implied move that's substantially higher than $17 at almost $25. All right. So, what are the pros and cons? Yeah, obviously, we're going to collect more premium, but we're going to be at risk for a longer period of time. Okay. So, it's really a matter of choice. It's a matter of, it's a trader's preference which way you like to go, okay? So there's nothing wrong with selling the, the shorter term, okay? Nothing wrong with selling even longer term than what I like to sell either. There's pros and cons either way, okay? Now, let's, let's, let's go out to the monthly though, all right? Let's go out to the August, I'm going, okay, here we are at the August 20s, and uh, we looking at the at the money, uh, we're at about uh, 12 and uh, 13. We're going to call it $25. We're going to call it $25 implied move. Double the implied move. That's easy math. That I can do in my head. 25 times 2 is 50 bucks. If I'm at 375 at the money, I need to go up 50 bucks to go two times the implied move. 50 bucks is going to take me up to the 425s. I'm going to sell one there, and 375 minus 50 bucks takes me down to the 325s on the put side, and I'm going to, right there, sell one there, creating this risk profile, okay, unlimited risk beyond two times the implied move, if I commit that trade, and name it Facebook 2X implied move. I like to put these uh, profit targets in here and stop losses in here just because there's a place that I can uh, monitor that um, uh, in, in the software, but uh, I, I can skip that. So there the trade is uh, placed. Let's see how it performs. Let's go forward a day. To July 29th. Price moved. You can see it moved substantially from the middle down to here. Yet there is there is $107 of profit. There was a $235 um, 
a uh, two, credit on that trade, by the way, $235 credit and uh, almost 50% profit in that first day. Almost uh, a, a substantial amount of profit in that first day. It doesn't re, uh, it, the, 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 yeah, it's calculating uh, profit against uh, maximum risk, I think, not against margin risk. Never really paid attention to that until just now. I just noticed that. All right, let's go forward another day to Friday, July 30th, last Friday. Uh, price moved a little bit further, but the profit stayed about the same. Uh, coming into um, yesterday, August 2nd, price moved a little bit further. Price profit increased somewhat to $126 of profit. In other words, you could close this trade, lock in $126 of profit yesterday. And where are we at today? Uh, oh, yeah, this thing does not like to. Let's see. This thing does not like to do this live and give me good numbers in the live mode. Uh, okay, for live mode, I really need to go back to think or swim, but we'll bypass that. Anyway, we're, we're, we're holding strong with this trade. And one thing I'd like to uh, uh, bring to the table, one thing I'd like to bring to the table is what happens if price does move two times the implied move and I am in trouble and price is way over here. How do I deal with that? And the answer is sell more premium, bring in more credit, buy yourself some time might be part of the answer. If you sold short dated options, you might have to roll out in time, but definitely you need to roll down your call strike. If price goes through your put strike, the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that call, buy it back, because it's gonna be really cheap, and I'm gonna sell something very close to where the stock is trading as a call. I'm going to, in other words, I'm going to do, a, I'm going to implement an, an adjustment by entering into a vertical spread, selling a lower price call, buying back the call that I already sold. Can I do that even if price didn't go through my put? The answer is yes. If you think that this stock is not going to recover from its negative um, reaction, traders' negative reaction to the earnings event. If you think this stock is not likely to recover and move forward and power forward above, let's go, let's go back to toss charts and put in Facebook so that we can reference this chart as we let's zoom in on this area of the earnings event. And then there's the one day reaction and price continue to go down and continue to go down. And today is continuing to go down. If you don't think this price can recover back to its pre earnings close of around 373 ish, anytime between now and expiration day, can you implement that same adjustment strategy or something similar? And the answer is absolutely yes. I don't need to leave this call up here not really doing much work for me anymore. It's already deteriorated in value down to, let's see, as of Monday, August 2nd, that call has already deteriorated down in value to only nine cents. You see that? It's only worth nine cents now. I don't have much to gain by just leaving that there. But if I didn't think the stock was going to recover, I could roll that down. I could do an adjustment. For example, I could go, hmm, well, let's be kind of conservative. 
let's go to something outside of one standard deviation. Okay, here's one standard deviation highlighted in the in the darker blue here at 370. What if we went to 375 or even 380? Let's be even really more conservative. Let's go to 380. $10 outside the one standard deviation. Let's sell one there. And buy, well, buy that one back. Because that one's not really doing much for us anymore. And I don't want to be naked two calls because that would be adding too much risk. You can see what happens if I if I don't, you know, before I hit enter on this, if I just model up just selling this one call, I got this dangerous risk, but then I got even more risk with that with that uh, call that's that I'm already short up at the 425. So let's just instead of selling another call, let's sell a call and buy this one back just so that I'm not short two calls. So we'll buy that one back. And that changes my risk graph now to a naked strangle that is much tighter maximum profit zone. Yet both my call and my put are outside of one standard deviation come August 20th. I might get comfortable with that. What the heck? It's going to bring in another uh, 85 minus 9, about 74. Six cents, right? 76 cents. Going to bring in another 76 cents on top of the 235 I already collected. I already collected 235. This is going to bring me, bring me up to it. This is going to increase my profit potential from 235 up to 300 bucks. Okay. Again, caution to, to traders. Caution. This is high risk trading. There is, I shouldn't say it's high risk. I should say the, the, the dollar amounts are high dollar amounts. The risk is subjective. The risk is subjective and subject to probabilities. And the probabilities are in your favor. I see that Jill, had a comment, I'll read Jill's comment, because uh, let's see, I, I, I got quite a few comments in the, in the chat room here. Let me uh, see if I can expand this so I can uh, read this a little bit. Let me see, let me review the comments in the trick, because we're running, running out of time here, and I want to look at some stocks that we have coming up. Uh, I was going to show you one more, Google. Um, Google also was another great example of a stock that, uh, uh, that was uh, a recent high flyer and a lot of premium. Uh, all right, let's 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 see. Uh, let me just read these comments quick, man. Okay, Ankle has how do you recover from this? How to recover from it? Ankle is what I just il illustrated. Sell you the way to recover from it is to sell more premium and. If price actually goes through a strike one side or the other, you roll the one, the other side, the untested side, if you will, accept that terminology, the side that, that is profitable for you, roll that all the way. And, uh, and where to roll it? So this is not a trade for inexperienced traders because you trade this trade long enough and enough times you will experience it will come to be a bad day for you eventually this trade will go against you eventually if you tempt it enough tempt fate tempt the devil one too many times and you will have to deal with this and believe me i've dealt with it many times and there is a way to recover okay but uh uh and, and you just need to sell premium. You can even become inverted where your call is at a lower strike than your put. And you can roll out in time and continue selling. And sometimes it takes months and sometimes even years to recover 
from a trade like this gone bad. That is possible that that can happen, okay? So uh, without getting into that, uh, volatility cone is simply a study. You just go into toss studies and look up volatility cone. It's alphabetical. Uh, all right, and then Jill's comment. Selling 2X, the implied move on earnings release, wins 90 to 95% of the time. But one loss is likely to wipe out your prior 95% wins and then some. So to my experience on average, long term, I do best selling about one and a half times the implied move, but need to take into account the technicals and in some cases avoid selling naked options altogether. Okay, so thanks for that, Jill. And um, do you have criteria? Bill asks, uh, Bill, the criteria is, uh, yeah, the criteria is, is the, is the dollar amount I get for two times out, outside the implied move, double the implied move, is the dollar amount I'm able to collect sufficient enough for me to accept the risk at the same time concerning what is the likelihood? And it's really important to know what is the likelihood. So let's take a look at Google and let's see. Amazon. How you have recovered. I didn't do uh, Amazon. Um, Amazon, I don't think, was a problem either. Uh, I think Amazon would have been fine, right? Amazon didn't move two times the implied move. Amazon moved big, but not two times the implied move. Um, two times the implied move. I looked at this trade. I did not take this trade. But I looked at it, and I think I was looking at, I think I was looking at the 3,000. I think I was looking at the 3,000 strike. I can't, uh, I can't remember, but uh, uh, let, let's just take a look. What was the implied move? Let's see, because I, I could be wrong. My memory could be wrong. So uh, to answer that question, let's go look at uh, the implied move monthly of Amazon. A M Z N was uh, $200 basically. Double the implied move would be $400. So let's see. The stock moved, uh, let's see, from 36 down 400 would be 3,200 would be down here. So here's the implied move. And I was actually considering selling the 3,000 because there was still substantial premium, even well beyond two times the implied move. I was looking at selling the 3,000, but it was gonna be, the margin was pretty intense. And, um, and I just, you know, there comes a point where I got to draw the line where I'm not willing to take on that much naked risk. So I passed on the trade, even though uh, uh, even though the next morning I looked back and thought, darn, that would have been fun selling the 3,000 put. But anyway, the implied move, the double the implied move would have been 3,200. So uh, there's no, we're good. Okay, so that that should, I hope, Sir, Srini, Srini, uh, that should answer your question. Um, all right, now let's see. Um, I said let's look at Google. I really can't go overtime today, folks. I apologize. I cannot go overtime today. I've got an important meeting scheduled immediately after the session. So uh, let's see. Google. Uh, Google, you can see, did nothing. Google has basically done nothing. Selling two times the implied move is a huge winner on Google. Obviously, I can see that just by, by looking at the chart. The price chart is actually, it, it moved big. The, the biggest move it had was the one day after. And since then, it's actually been coming back towards where it closed pre-earnings, okay? So the profits have, I, without even modeling it up in uh, in analytical software, I can see that the profits have been getting better and better and better as each day goes along here for the two times the implied move Google trader. Okay, so again, works out like Jill says, ninety five percent of the time. 
but that one time that it hurts can wipe out lots of losses. That can happen, and but that's not the end of the story. You can still, if you know what you're doing, and I encourage you to back test the recovery of a trade gone bad like this, okay? And, and learn just what you need to do in rolling your options out in time and rolling the untested side up or down, whatever the case might be, depending on which way the stock goes. Okay. All right, so now what's coming up? All right, let's take a look. We can go uh, over to optionslam.com. Let's go into the stock screener and take a look at the uh, generic screen because I don't have time to put in custom fields. We'll just look at the generic screen and we can see that, um, now the generic screen is something that I personally saved myself. You've got to create your own generic screen. Your, 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 your optionslam.com doesn't come with all these saved screenings that I have up here. Oh, here's a pre-ER straddle. That's the same screening as a pre-ER uh, strangle, okay? So there's a pre-ER straddle that I've already saved. All right, so then that comes up, and um, and uh, let's see how far out in time. One week from today, and, 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 and there's 12 pages. Oh, boy, that's too many pages. So anyway, I already know a few that I, that I, and I mentioned them in the um, Option Slam uh, uh, title uh, description of this webinar, and those are uh, somewhere on this list is going to be Etsy, uh, uh, Moderna, uh, let's see, and uh, Roku. All right, let's take a look. Those are going to be on this list. Uh, I'd have to fish through here to find them, but um, uh, uh, for some reason that's not on there. Maybe my maybe maybe my uh, my screening criteria is. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We got to take that screening criteria off because what we're looking for is high price stocks for this two time. This is a regular straddle. This is looking to sell the pre earnings release straddle um, uh, or buy it. I mean, some people might want to buy it. Uh, I, I forget what this was set up for. Anyway, that's the wrong criteria. Uh, what, what I'm really looking for to set up this two times the implied move, I would want to set my criteria to be high price stocks. Stocks priced over $200, okay? Over 200, even 300, 500, $700. High price stocks is what I'm, because that's where you're gonna get the premium. You're not gonna, you look at stocks that are under $100, Stocks under $100, uh, and you go out two times the implied move, the, most of the time, you're not going to be able to justify the risk that you're taking on for the premium that you're going to collect, that 2x, okay? Uh, however, in my mind, at least in my mind, that's the way, you know, and, and again, that's a subjective, and it's, and it's uh, discretionary. And it's uh, up to each trader to make those decisions for himself. But when I start looking at $800 of premium, two times the size, X the, the, the implied move, right? Or, or more, or, or even half of that, $400 of premium. Yeah, now I'm getting tempted, all right? But if I'm only going to collect 50 bucks, you know, and I'm taking on a lot of risk, I, I don't know that I'm going to do that very often. Um, uh, once in a while, I'm willing to lose sleep over a trade, <laughs> but I don't want to lose sleep over 50 bucks. <laughs> it's not worth it. But uh, I might be willing to lose sleep over a grand. <laughs> does that does that make sense? I don't know. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe it doesn't. Not sure. All right. So let's look at uh, a, a couple stocks um, that are coming up. Um, let's see, Etsy, I think that one is still, uh, or did that, did they report, uh, eight, four, that would be tomorrow after the close, tomorrow after the close is Etsy, uh, $189 stock. Let's see. What do you think? 
$189 stock. The implied move for Etsy is, let's see, we'll just go to, uh, uh, it's not in this list, but I'll just open this up. We'll go here. We'll go to Etsy. And we'll see what the implied move is out to the regular monthly. And so I just switched over here to the implied move monthly. And the, uh, uh, we're looking at 22 bucks. Right now, the implied move is 22 bucks. Now, I would not put this trade on today. I would wait until tomorrow, uh, an hour or two before the close. Tomorrow is when they report. I would wait till tomorrow because I don't know where the stock is going to be tomorrow. It's, I know where it is today. So I know where to where two times the implied move is from where the stock price is today, but I don't know where the stock price is going to be tomorrow at the close. So I'm going to wait until tomorrow before I look at putting this trade on. And could you use the August? Well, that's only uh, uh, 17 days, less than three weeks to the August now. Could you go out further in time? Absolutely. You could go out further in time. That's going to be a bigger implied move. That's going to be a $30 implied move as opposed to the 17-day trade is only a $23 implied move. So you could look at both here. You could look at the August. You could look at the Septembers. And uh, so let's just start with the August. And uh, we got a... Uh, a $23 implied move, double that to $46. 190 plus 46 is uh, 236. Uh, there is a 235 strike. Yeah, there's some premium there. There's some premium there at two times the implied move on the call side. And there's probably even more premium on the downside because usually puts are more expensive than calls, right? So let's go. Uh, 23, what did I say? It was uh, 2340. Uh, I, I lost my train of thought there. So we went 190 up 35. So we need to go 190 minus 35 just so that we're equidistant. And uh, that's going to take us down to the 155. And slightly more premium uh, there at a dollar uh, forty-five or so. Control key. Two hundred sixty-five dollars of premium collected. Two times the implied move on Etsy. But a couple things I need to check. I definitely need to check what has Etsy done in the past. So I'm going to jump over here to uh, Etsy. And not only the implied move monthly, the one-day move sometimes moves outside the implied move. Um, now, that's the one standard deviation implied move. That's the implied move. We're out two times the implied move, okay? But this stock can move outside the applied move. And given some time, we'll go over to the post earnings page. Given some time, can that move increase from a outside the implied move to approach a 2x the implied move? Or can you get whipsawed where you have a 14% move up and three weeks later, you're 22% down. So be careful rolling that untested side, right? There's a caution note that even that can come to haunt you on occasion. Not usually. You can see the consistency is pretty well here, except for that one example. So I'm glad uh, we want to always make sure that you check the Option Slam historical data at the post earnings page before so that you can assess what your real risk is and what this stock is capable of doing based on historical statistics. Okay, folks, can't stick with you any longer. Thanks for being here. Thanks for your time and your patience. 
Uh, hope that this was helpful. Look forward to seeing you next time um, here at the next webinar. Goodbye for now and good trading.